No, not again. As you could probably tell by the console background footage, I went back to console. That's a thing that I typically do a couple times a season, but not usually on my own account. Now that cross saves a thing, I can just use my PC account on console, so I'll probably do that from now on, instead of wondering if the comment section is going to be like, really dude, I don't think this is actually your gameplay. But alas, this is actually my PC account. You can tell in the future because my weapon rolls will be the exact same that I use on console as I use on PC, but I will change my PSN ID and gamertag in the future so I don't get targeted in matches. Pay special attention to the fact that I said in the future, meaning I fairly enjoyed myself on console and I think I'm going to go back more often. Of course, I do prefer playing on PC, specifically for the graphics and the fact that I can use mouse and keyboard to have more deliberate aim. And I know that sentence alone just really annoyed somebody and they're already typing it up in the comment section, but Cammy, when you use mouse and keyboard, you uh, experience less recoil and have to compensate less. Yeah, I'm aware. But also, if you plug in a controller, you get aim friction. So your crosshair slows down when you hover over a target, so you can use more of the stick to compensate for recoil. There are pros and cons to both input methods. Never, 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 never turn this into a PC versus console debate when it's actually a mouse and keyboard versus controller debate. In other words, you can plug a controller into a PC and have an experience that is one to one with console. And for the record, you might want to turn the volume up on this one. I think both input methods are easy. There, I said it. You're not cracked. I'm not cracked. I'm not very good at the game. You're not very good at the game. Uh, we basically get training wheels on every weapon because it doesn't matter whether you use mouse and keyboard, whether you use controller, they both get aim assist. They both get bullet magnetism. And to make matters worse, this is pretty terrifying since the launch of Destiny 2, weapons have only gotten better. They're stronger in the fact that you have to hit less headshots or those headshots are made easier with a higher base aim assist stat or an additional perk that boosts aim assist or both of those facts combined. What this ultimately amounts to is that it is extremely easy to land shots on both controller and mouse and keyboard. It doesn't matter if you're hit by a flinch, it doesn't matter if your crosshair is on their health bar sometimes. Chances are, you're still gonna hit the shot. Take this typical scenario I'm in for example. Anytime I'm in a Twitch chat, someone's like, hey Cam, they lean in real close and they tell me a secret, they go, hey, have you uh, seen this weapon? It's uh, really, really good. It's crispy. And so then I check the weapon. I look at the aim assist stat, and sure enough, it's like 90 aim assist. Obviously it's crispy. What, you thought you and me were actually hitting our shots? No, it's the weapon doing all the work. It's the training wheels. It always has been. And I know this may be a hard pill for some to swallow, and others already know the presence of aim assist. But at the end of the day, it just keeps getting easier to aim, so reaction speed matters more. And in a peer-to-peer -peer connection game, it's really hard to guarantee that you're always going to have better reaction speed. However, your aim is an acquired skill. It gets better with time. Your game sense gets better. You can put your crosshair where you know somebody is going to walk into it. But the problem with everybody having such high aim assist and weapons that require very few headshots is that it is very easy to put your crosshair somewhere in the general direction of somebody and get the kill. 
In other words, if it's easy to aim, it's really hard to distinguish an experienced player from a new player. This premise is the leading cause of a lot of frustration I have with the Destiny universe right now. Essentially, if anybody can be good at the game with some sort of cheesy build or moderately decent aim, then nobody's good. There's just very little opportunity to prove you're better than somebody because all you have to do is aim somewhat in the general direction of their health bar, get the headshot, and you don't even have to get the headshot sometimes with weapons. You can just aim for the body. With aim assist this crazy, it's not difficult to reach what most would consider the upper echelon of aiming skill. You also gotta consider that the weapon balance right now is super strange considering that the most lethal weapons are also the easiest to use. That doesn't make any sense. Back in year one of Destiny 2, the most lethal options were the most difficult to use, so most of the community didn't use them because they weren't as crisp. They didn't give as free of headshots. I mean, every gun in this game gives free headshots, but they weren't as free. So there was some opportunity to prove you are more skilled than your opponent. And that's just considering aim. The skill gap can be compressed in other ways, like, I don't know, giving you wall hacks for hitting a headshot with a weapon that's already easy to aim, or even worse, just getting shot at in a first person shooter. It tells you exactly where somebody is, as if the radar telling you half the map's general direction of player flow isn't enough, you have to have a helmet that does it to Okay, I've calmed down. Uh, anyway, what I was trying to get across is that Long story short, this game limits the opportunities that you have to prove you are more skilled than your opponent, and that's a problem for long-term investment. Of course, newer and below average players would appreciate a lot of these elements that make the game easier to play, whether it's easier to aim or giving you free information. Maybe they grow accustomed to feeling powerful without putting a lot of effort towards attaining that, and they like the game. They keep playing, they're hooked, they're invested, so they play even more. They start actually critically thinking about what they're doing in the game because they want to get a slight edge on their opponent. And skill-based matchmaking says, mm, I think we need to find you some better opponents. So then they start becoming even better. But they realize that as they reach these upper echelons of skill, which like I said earlier, is a lot easier to do now than it ever was, they realize that their options to outplay their opponent are quite limited. Again, it's not going to take very long to reach the state where I'm at right now, which is a state where you can watch some footage back and realize you lost and there's nothing you can do about it. There's not a different play you can make. There's not aiming slightly better. Your options are so limited that sometimes the answer is you just got unlucky or sometimes you do get lucky and you happen to pull some sort of kill clip plus an overshield plus a wall hacks to bank a perfect grenade, giving you an early super, and getting a team wipe where they can't even run away from a heat-seeking frisbee, and suddenly you have yourself a 7th column. But it's a hollow 7th column because the effort to get it wasn't really there. Or rather, the glimmer of hope to outplay you from your opponent's perspective just isn't there. There is nothing that they could have done differently to change that situation. And it really does have to do with the ease of use of the game. I think my recent example of a heat-seeking frisbee is actually a good one to elaborate on. The Titan Sentinel Super lets you hold a shield that you can block with or throw. Now, it is heat-seeking and bounces off the wall multiple times. So if you throw it into a crowd, it's going to hit target one, and instead of continuing on its initial flight path, its trajectory, it's going to scan for a target and go to the nearest opponent. So it'll hit target number two for free. Earlier in the lifespan of Destiny 2, the shield was not heat-seeking. So if you wanted a multi-kill, you really needed to know the maps and kite your opponent, as well as throw the frisbee accurately to begin with. That's why back in the day when I got a frisbee multi, we'd all lose our minds in the chat. Whereas now, we sort of shrug our shoulders and are like, well, that's kind of stupid. Three at diamond, might be a kill, two oh. kills. Oh. Holy shit, kid. You see what I mean? In one situation, it was calculated. In the other situation, it was free. And that really ties a nice bow over what I've been trying to say. Basically, when this game gives so much skill away for free, it takes away the good feeling of getting good. Which is, at the end of the day, one of the best reasons to replay a game. It's for the highlight moments, the obvious landmarks that you are improving as a player. Now you can psychologically bait somebody out, instead of getting shot by them and then having wall hacks 
to where you just pre-aim as they walk around the corner. You don't even precisely aim, you're just somewhere in the general direction of their head, and you win that engagement. Yeah, a little golf clap here. You really outplayed them. This is what I mean and why it frustrates me a little bit when I see comments that say something like, Hey Cammy, why do you want something to get nerfed? If it gets nerfed, the next best thing's just gonna take its place. Well, why does the best thing have to be the least skill intensive? What if the best thing was the most skill intensive and I had many more opportunities to outplay my opponent? Then I wouldn't care if it's the best, I would just use it. The point of making today's video is to say that I've always wanted the most skillful options to be the most lethal, but I don't think that's ever going to happen in this series, so what I need is a perspective shift. I no longer am going to look at this as a first person shooter foremost. Especially when you consider the stark improvements in the land of PvE, I'm going to look at Destiny as an MMO first, then a party game like Mario Kart, then a first person shooter like Halo or Call of Duty. If I don't shift my perspective to reflect those thoughts, I'm setting myself up for failure and I'll ultimately end up quitting Destiny altogether. Which is a shame because I really like this game series. So what this means for my channel moving forward is that I'm no longer going to look for skillful avenues to outplay my opponent. Instead, I'm just going to abuse whatever cheesy bullshit is out there and do it slightly better than my opponent, which may not happen. I don't have to be the best. Like, imagine you're at Thanksgiving at a family gathering, you pull out Mario Kart and start playing, and then you start popping off on your family having an ego like, oh yeah, I'm better than all you guys at Mario Kart. What's gonna end up happening is you'll look like a clown and your family will think you're a jerk. To make matters worse, the balancing of Destiny right now is like Mario Kart, except everybody has a blue shell at all times. Yeah. Congratulations. You beat me. Good game. Maybe I'll do better in the next one. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's the perspective change right there. Instead of being like, why did I lose that? I don't really feel like I got outplayed. I'm gonna be saying, hmm, I wonder if the bullet bill will let me skip through that waterfall. Meanwhile, I feel like my comment section in future videos is gonna be like, why did you use one-eyed mask with that new weapon? Aren't you skilled at the game? To which I'll reply, no, I'm not really that skilled at the game. If you want this game to be pushed in a more skillful direction, like I don't know, not free information, not aim assist through the roof making every gun effortless to use at a top level, then by all means let Bungie know because it's not my responsibility to balance the game, just to critique it. And it's almost like my critiques of when this game had more skillful elements like in year one was positive and resounding. Like I almost liked that sort of thing. Like I enjoyed outgunning everybody with my primary weapons while you were getting outgunned and thinking it was the game's fault and going to a different game and complaining about it on the salt mines and trying to use more weapons with higher aim assist and calling them crispy and thinking it was you the whole time. Yeah, yeah, go. Let Bungie know that you want the game to be pushed in that direction again. But if you don't, I'm just going to continue playing Mario Kart with blue shells until everyone gets tired of blue shells so we can go get piranha plants instead. I'll be honest with you though, I never asked for any of this. I don't like playing Destiny with all blue shells. I really don't. My engagement level, my interest in the game, will only last about an hour at most, a couple games. Whereas previously, when it was a more fair system, I could play all day every day because I know my skill is only going up. If that's the price I have to pay for Destiny to be a commercial success, then I guess I'm cool with that. It's just going to take a perspective shift. So for my content moving forward, at least on the MMO front of Destiny 2, I'm going to focus on PvE challenges and acquiring gear that helps me min-max my character to unlock some cool builds. Now sometimes I will be able to use these builds in PvP, but the vast majority of the time I don't think I will succeed. So then I'll shift what should have been an analytical video to a comedy video or an outright review comparing it to the top options just to save somebody some time. PvP live commentaries on my channel are as good as dead, or at least what they used to be, is dead. Instead of taking an analytical approach and really trying to break down the decision making process into more consumable bits on the spot for my viewers, Instead of talking about the psychological aspects of gaming, like maybe you have an off day aiming, maybe you're getting too tilted, instead of talking about any of that during a live commentary, I'm just going to set myself a silly goal, like maybe get a triple kill with Trinity Ghoul by comboing an arc bolt and shooting it over the map. 
Maybe I try for that. Maybe I succeed, maybe I don't. But instead of talking about the analytical approach, I'm just going to talk about whatever I feel like that day. Like if I sat down to do a live commentary right now, I'd be talking about how I volunteered over Veterans Day weekend for an event at the Navy SEAL Museum. If that was the commentary, I'd definitely elaborate and say why causes that help veterans are the nearest and dearest to my heart, give you the reasons for that, how I've had family in military service, etc, etc. I know that's going to disappoint some viewers, like they're going to click on the video expecting me to see using Trinity Ghoul with the utmost skill and efficiency. And that's just never going to be the case when everybody has blue shells. So I'm adjusting my content. If that doesn't seem like something you'd want to watch, well then I'd have to be okay with that. I still want to make variety content, like if you guys have not seen my video, my recent video on Resident Evil 2, I recommend seeing it. I think that's where my content is going to shift, and the next game I have my eye on is Pokemon Sword and Shield. So I am so ready. Of course I'm aware that I might lose a lot of subscribers because they originally subscribed under the guise that I would continue doing analytical PvP live commentaries, but since this perspective shift, obviously they're not going to get exactly what they subscribe for, so they might unsubscribe. But maybe they don't. Maybe they wait for that 15th or 16th video that is comedy variety content. Maybe they're subscribed because of my level 20 free to play series in Destiny 2. And that's something I do want to continue on, but I will also continue adapting that live commentary formula. So if we're parting ways right now, thank you so much for your support of my channel over the years, and I'm going to continue improving my craft and adjusting my formula to meet the needs of whatever game I happen to be enjoying at the time. If you skipped ahead on this video, you're probably wondering what the summary the too long didn't watch synopsis of this video is, which is essentially summed up in this sentence. I no longer want to be a hardcore PvP player. It just feels like I'm setting myself up for a lot of frustration when everything in this game is so easy. So I'd rather just take a perspective shift and treat this game more like a party game like Mario Kart rather than a potential competitive shooter.